Good evening, this is Dr. Thomas Klein coming to you from London. No, that's that was Edward R. Murrow. Uh, coming to you from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I have an interest in people with long-term disease, especially people with long-term painful disease who need treatment with God's own medicine, as Sir William Osler, the father of internal medicine, put it. Um, I do have a red eye that you may be noticing, and it was not from a fist fight over these issues. Uh, it was from a dog. Anyway, we're going to talk about PDMP. So first of all, you need to know what PDMP means. It means Prescription Drug Monitoring Program. But it's not monitoring prescription drugs. It's only monitoring, guess what, the evil opiates, opioids, and narcotics. Narcotics is the best word. Um, this was created uh, about six or seven years ago. Uh, it was a grant from the Department of Justice slash DEA as a way to track every single pill prescribed by the person it was prescribed to and the person who prescribed it. So Brandeis University got the grant and guess who was on the original petition or the original grant proposal? So this was another prop uh, endeavor. So what it was, it was sold as a way to help doctors with their patients. I'm not quite sure how that would be because the thing was obviously designed to be a law enforcement document. Now that's interesting because either addiction problems are medical or they are criminal. And if you ask anybody, oh no, they're not criminal. They are a disease. We know that they have a disease. Then why are we setting up a computer system at Brandeis University to track every single person and make a permanent record of their usage? So it was originally said, you know, clinical. No, that's not true. Then they said, we want to catch um, people who doctor shop because they believe that those are the real crooks and criminals. 60% of people who doctor shop are people who are undertreated and have to try and they try to go to more than one doctor. In this state, it's illegal to go to more than one doctor to get a controlled substance if the two doctors don't know. I spoke with the person uh, in, uh, uh, high up in the system here in the state of PDMP and guess how many people were caught last year by the surveillance system. Three people. They paid over a million and a half dollars to set up this program. So that's about $500 per catch. And what happened to them? We don't know. Were they locked up? Do we lock up people with addiction disease or trying to get prescriptions? The um, the question is, the government's paying all this money to track doctors across the country and patients across the country. Did they ever do a, a little preliminary study to find out if it worked? Well, here's a study by Allison N. Sero, published, uh, um, published last year. And she found in reviewing uh, 17 studies uh, including Dr. Fink's study, which we're going to mention in a minute, that these are not working. There's no change in the overdose death, which of course is the big mantra coming out of CDC and Prop, that these overdose deaths are caused by bad doctors prescribing too much, over-prescribing as we had in one of our previous talks. That's not true. Overdose deaths are coming from people with a genetic disease. Type 2 opiate addiction is a genetic disease. And they're denied treatment, so they go out and try to find their treatment, and they get bad batches. They don't know what they're doing. 
Uh, they're mixing with high dose alcohol and other bad things and they die in the streets. About 5% of our 1 million heroin addicts die every year. Those are the numbers you hear. 40,000 people overdosed. How come nobody's asking who were they? They were street people, heroin addicts. The CDC did some studies uh, to determine and, and make the claim that high doses are bad for you. And this course is picked up on the, on the PDMP. So if patients are giving high doses of medicines, doctors are prescribing high doses of medicines, then they're criminals because the CDC set a limit. And guess what? There's no limit. The CDC uh, claims that seven studies found a correlation between high doses and overdose deaths. These were done in people receiving regular prescriptions because that's the only place they could get the data. You can't get any data from people in the streets dying. So instead of saying 40,000 people die every year, they should say 39,500 people die from heroin overdoses because we're not treating them and 500 people die in the community. But everybody thinks the 40,000 in the community. We hear over and over again this 141 people die a day from overdoses. Overdoses from what? These are the heroin overdoses. Seven people are dying from prescription drugs when they die with the drugs on board. Nobody has proved that it's from the drugs. And guess what? This, this really surprised me, and we mentioned it before. The blood test that you use to determine whether or not somebody's overdosed uh, from these various medications are not reliable. As far as we have found in our research, there's no blood test to determine whether a person actually died from their overdose. So if you're taking opiates and you die from an aneurysm or a stroke or a heart attack, nobody knows that. They just assume it's the evil opioids. Opioid is a word that was created to endanger, in, engender more fear. Have you ever heard the word opioid mentioned with the other two words? Opioid pain medicine. Opioid pain medicine. 95% of the production of opiates in this country go to treating pain. The DEA has intercepted 5% of the illegal drugs coming into the U.S. and they, oddly enough, have been given power by the 1970 Controlled Substance Act to control manufacturing. So the idea is too much opiates out on the street are going to make more addicts, but we know that's not true because we know it's a genetic disease. 141 people a day die from overdoses, mostly in the streets, and guess how many people a day are being cut off from their pain medicine without their permission? 3,000. So, the big study was done by uh, David Fink and several other uh, researchers at Columbia University about the PDMP. And first of all, we know they didn't bother to find out if it really worked. And this is interesting. This is a very carefully done paper, which we'll list uh, with lots of references. Evidence that the PDMP implementation either decreases or increases fatal or non-fatal overdoses is largely insufficient. There's no data that says it works. And worse, some evidence showed unintended consequences. Guess what? These researchers in three of the papers believe that the PDMP has increased overdose deaths. Now, why would that be? Because the people who have the genetic disease, type 2 opiate addiction, were being cut off from their prescription drugs by this draconian Brandeis University illegal, unconstitutional surveillance system of every single American. So whenever you clamp down on prescription drugs, the heroin addicts have to get heroin. And when the heroin addicts get heroin, guess what? They die because they get impure heroin uh, 
they don't mix it properly, they don't know what they're doing, bolstered by harsh law and order rhetoric from the president and his aides, police around the country are using electronic databases to unleash a vast crackdown on opioid abusers, they're not abusers, they're people with an illness, and the alleged crooked doctors who sustain them. Doctors take a lot of gas for a lot of things, but you know what? This time we're not responsible. Thank you.